Hi, and welcome to this Fornaf Coffee Break. My name is René Brummel. I'm a product specialist at Fornaf, and I will be your presenter today. As this Coffee Break is live, you can ask your questions by the go to webinar question window. We will answer them at the end of the Coffee Break. Today, we're going to discuss best practices for creating new Fornaf reports. In an earlier Coffee Break, we have already discussed when to create custom layouts and when to create new reports. Today, we're going to discuss how to create new reports. Creating new reports is not just about creating them. As we all know, Fornaf makes that easy. The problem arrives when you need to work on your reports with a team, maintain your reports, sometimes years after you created them, upgrade them, test them, the list is endless. In today's coffee break, we will give you some tools to make all of these tasks easier. To demonstrate the best practices for creating new four nav reports, I'm going to use these steps. The prerequisites, what do I need to get going? In step two, I will create a rapid prototype of a report. In step three, I will show, to show you how to collaborate and deliver. In step four, I will discuss report maintenance. Let's start with the first step. Today, I will work on a Business Central on-premise server with the Business Central 2023 Wave 2, Wave 2 release. I have installed the Universal Code version of the Fornaf Customizable Report Pack, and I've executed the step-by-step -step wizard from the assisted setup to get started. Of course, everything I do today is it will also work in a cloud environment. I have also installed the Fornaf Designer, Visual Studio Code, and Git. first thing we will do is to rapidly prototype a new report. This is one of the core strengths of Fornav. You can simply create a report, pull data from all over Business Central and get a good looking result. Fornav will immediately publish a report in Business Central so you can test and fine tune efficiently. So let's go and have a look. Let's go to the Fornav designer, hit the new button and in our report template I'm going to play with the sales orders per customer which I've got right here. And once it's generated, it always seems to take a while when you're waiting for it. There we go. Once we've generated it, I'm going to change my report name because 4956790 is not a nice name. I'm going to call it the PTE customer list. And whilst we're at it, I'm going to give it a caption as well. Like that. And for now, this should do for me. So to publish this report in Business Central, I can't test it right away because it doesn't exist in Business Central yet. We all know we can hit save as object on server. That will create an extension, which will be installed on Business Central immediately, which means I can preview my report. And get the result. Let's say I'm not happy with the report and simply close it and go here and say no 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 no. I want green. Preview the report. There we go. Everything fine. I'm going to save as an object on server. And now my report has been saved as an object on the on the server, which means that in Business Central, if I go to my extension management, I will find at the bottom my PTE customer list, and I've created a PTE my list in preparation for this webinar. So you can see I've created and deployed two uh, two reports to this uh, Business Central database. So now we've deployed our extension to our database and we have tested it and we know it works and we know it looks good, but is this a desirable situation? Do we have any way to track changes to our reports? What if, what if we have 10, 20 or 100 reports? Can we trust this mechanism to deploy our reports to production? Can we use this to effectively collaborate with, with a colleague? And the short answer is that we can't. Our Business Central database 
is not a way of controlling the source code of our reports. What if two colleagues make changes to the same report, but in a different test database? How are we going to track and deploy changes to five report extensions, let alone 50? We need to have a mechanism for collaboration and deployment. Fortunately, we do. It's called Visual Studio Code, and it's called uh, Git Source Control. And you can use Git, Git Source Control with GitHub, uh, or with uh, Azure DevOps, or with uh, some other uh, source control management systems. It's the mechanism that counts. And VS Code combined with Git will give us everything we need. And it's also the way that we create and maintain uh, Business Central extensions anyway. So uh, the question is, how do we get from the simple uh, standalone extensions that we can rapidly create and prototype to a Visual Studio Code extension with a bunch of reports inside it that we can control and maintain. And the answer is quite simple. We just open the report in uh, in the Fornav Designer. We hit Save As. Instead of saving as an object on the server, we simply save the report in our extension project. Uh, and my extension project is right here on the screen. And the report will be given the name that I've already given it, pte-customerlist.report.al. I'm going to save this report into my VS Code extension. And if I open my VS Code extension, you will find that I've got a report that already exists, the PTE My List, which, as I said, uh, I've created before this webinar. I now also have the PTE customer list report, and you will find that I've also got a docx file, which contains the actual layout, and I've got a docx.json file, which contains a JSON um, preview format of the report. Uh, you can switch that on easily in Fornav in the settings. You have designer settings, and in the designer settings, we, you have a check mark automatically save a JSON representation of the layout. I always have that switched on because that gives you the JSON representation of the layout. And as we are going to see later on, it allows me a way of tracking changes to my reports. You will also see that in my source control tab in Visual Studio Code, uh, what has changed to my extension? So you can see I've got my PTE customer list report, my docx file and my JSON file. You can see I've created them. You can see when I've created them and with the Git uh, branching, uh, which I'm not going to discuss today because that's going way too deep for today. Uh, you can also uh, fine tune when which change is going into, uh, into production. So it really gives you fine grain control over what happens, who does it and when are you going to release it. So that's one thing. I'm going to show you another trick, which uh, we use quite a lot, uh, because Fornav, as we know, contains not just extensions. It also contains, uh, like we have in this database, uh, it contains custom layouts for standard reports. It contains Fornav language. It contains Fornav language. It contains a ton of stuff uh, that we do to maintain and create reports. If I go to my Fornav setup, you will find in the 4 and setup that we have a backup feature where we can export or export across company. I typically use export across company. This gives me all of my settings in my entire database. I'm going to hit export all. And that exports a 4 and backup.zip. And if I take this zip file and I go to the source folder of my report, you can see this is a source folder of my report because it contains these two reports. I will simply paste my backup zip file and use 7-zip to extract it and delete the zip file. That gives me a folder with the full Fornav backup in my VS Code extension, which means that if I go to Visual Studio Code, I have a Fornav backup and in this Fornav backup, I have all of my settings and all of these settings, if I go to my source control management, are now maintained in my source control, which means that if somebody makes any changes in your, for instance, your test environment, you can also change, take those functional changes, move them into your VS Code extension, 
and pull them into your branching and releasing of all of the data that goes into, uh, into your production environment. If I'm done, and I am done right now, I will simply select all of my changes, commit them to my branch, and sync my changes so everybody else can see my changes and somebody else may work on them, somebody else may merge changes that they've created themselves. This is a bullet, bulletproof way of maintaining your code and making sure that everybody works on the same code and making sure that if, you, uh, if your customer asks for something else on this extension in a month, in a year, in five years, in 10 years, which happens, uh, you always have the latest version of your code and you can just open it and work on it. It can be done for one report, two reports, 50 reports, or 100 reports, or 400 reports, as, we, uh, as we've seen before. In our next coffee break, we will discuss working with Fornav in VS Code in depth. Uh, today, we are just going to discuss collaboration and delivery. So if you want to know more about how to work with Fornav in VS Code, we'll give you some more tips and tricks in the next coffee break. And finally, after the project is done, everything is released, we need to go into maintenance mode. So a customer calls us and says, uh, I want to add a data item to, uh, to this specific report. I want to make some changes, no problem, because we have the source code. Um, and because I use Visual Studio Code with Git, I can easily get the latest version of the code, uh, create a new test branch, and update my reports. So what we're going to do is I've created this uh, PTE MyList extension before. Let's go and edit that and see what happens. So I'm just going to open a report from a file open my PTE MyList report that opens the report in the Fornav Designer. We'll quickly add a data item, which is going to be the sales header. And I use the sales header because that's a really quick and easy demo. And simply grab the number and the amount fields. This is not really about adding data and data items to a report. I just want to show you what happens when I do this and when I change this. So I've changed my report in uh, my VS Code extension. Once again, save as the PTE mylist or report.al, which already exists, so I'm going to replace it. So that concludes the changes that I will do in, uh, in Fornav. I will open my report in VS Code. And you will notice in our source control management, we've got some changes. And right here, I can see in my PTE my list that I've made changes. And I can see that I have made those changes. And I can see when I've made those changes. I can see that the docx file has been changed, but I can't see what has been changed exactly because VS Code can't open docx files and compare them. But I can see the changes in my docx.json. So you can see I've added a sales header. And you can see I've added um, sales header uh, controls in my uh, in my report. All of this is going to be committed into, via, into, um, into Git and everybody can see I've made these changes and once again because I use Git branching I can choose exactly what I'm going to release and when I'm going to release it. Finally in Fornav we also have a way to work with our reports uh, here we go and create a custom layout for a report so i'm just going to grab my customer list and create a custom layout because this is one of the way uh, one of the things that four and a half excels at come on um i can simply make some changes and publish those changes uh, let's say i want to make these orange i can change it preview it and I can see everything is orange and fine. But how do I get these simple layout changes into my VS Code extension? Well, that's pretty simple as well, because in Fornav, I can take my layout and save as, and once again, I can save it into my source of my report. And in this case, I don't save it as an AL file. 
or I can simply open my layouts and save this as a docx file. Hit save. And go back to my VS Code extension. And you can see right now that I have made a change to my PTE customer list. There you go. You can see that the background color has been changed. You can see who has changed it, when it's been changed, and uh, if you use uh, a, a decent way of tracking your commits, you can even see why it's been changed. So let's recap what we just did. The first thing we did was to rapidly prototype a new report. We found that while it is really easy to create new reports, collaboration, deployment, and maintenance uh, can be really hard. We also found that this does, does not have to stop you from using that really easy and really cool rapid prototyping tool in 4NAV. Once the report is done and tested, you can simply merge the created report in a Git-controlled Visual Studio Code extension. And that gives you the best of both worlds. You can easily collaborate and deploy, and you can still provide easy access to the report for maintenance. In a typical real-world scenario, reports tend to be created by a consultant. They are close to the customer, and they can use the rapid prototyping tool to quickly get a, work, get a working report. Reports are then bundled and deployed by a developer, and that gives you the best of both worlds. It gives you all of the source control, and it gives you the easiest way to create a report for Business Central. As always, you can find the complete extension I worked on today on GitHub. Thank you for listening to me so far. I can see we have no questions. If you have any questions, just uh, type them in the question window and I can answer them uh, before we finish the coffee break. But for now, I will wrap up. If you want to know more about Fornaf or if you want to download the Fornaf Designer and Converter, please visit our website. If you want to install Fornaf in Business Central Cloud, please visit the Microsoft App Source. You can watch more videos about Fornaf on our YouTube channel. And if you have any questions, please email them to support at fornaf.com. For the full list of upcoming and recorded coffee breaks, please visit fornaf.com slash coffee break. We don't have any questions still, so thank you very much for listening. Goodbye.